This is Hope Television, proudly serving the Toledo District. Greetings everyone. With your daily word, I am Patrick Jones. The words of British writer and broadcaster Alexander Hamilton, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything, is often quoted as a call to action, particularly when encouraging someone to stand up for what is right and honorable. But long before Hamilton's quote became mainstream, the scriptures were calling on us as believers to take a stand. Open your Bible with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and reading from verse 13 to verse 17. Reading from the New International Version, it says, But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to, his, uh, to, to this through our gospel, that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. End of quote. The words of encouragement and prayer from the Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians are still words of encouragement and comfort for us today as believers. When we look at verses 13 and 14, there are some key words to look at and to observe. Underline the word ought. This word means the act of doing something presently, also has a meaning of one who owes a debt. Next, underline the words, always thank God for you. Here, the author, Paul, is, closely, is clearly a man with a heart that is grateful for the body of believers. As believers today, we need to always have a grateful heart for whatever God is doing. The words from the beginning also stand out, indicating the first fruits of converts in Thessalonica. Sanctifying, sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit also need to be underlined, as it is necessary as aspect of salvation, not something reserved for special Christians, but for all believers. According to the Holman New Testament commentary, sanctification is a process by which the believer becomes increasing holy. The Holy Spirit affects the process in conjunction with the individual who must choose continually to believe the truth. The Holy Spirit works through the word of truth, and that truth becomes energized by our faith and willful decision to believers or to believe and to obey. When faith and the Holy Spirit work in harmony, the believer develops more like Christ becoming increasing useful in the work of God and his kingdom. Belief in truth means to adhere to, trust in, to rely upon. In verse 14, Paul reassures the Thessalonians about their calling. This calling is a divine call and a present reality for us today. God continues to call us for his glory. Redeeming his creation not only brings glory to God, but also brings glory to those who believe, share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no glory other than God's glory. In Hebrews chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 we find that we share in His eternal glory in heaven. Reading from the New International Version it says, But in these last days He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. 
after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. End of quote. There are two technical words we find in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 15 that we need to look at. First is stand firm, meaning to withstand, not to be moved, to offer resistance to somebody or something, a refusal to abandon one's belief. We are called to stand firm in the New Testament about 19 times. This word is repeated throughout the New Testament to let us know that we cannot be shaken. Second technical word is hold, meaning to grasp, carry, or support with one's arm or hand, to keep, to detain, or to constrain. Paul encourages them to stand firm and to hold to the teaching we passed on to you. Whether it was by word of mouth or letter, these teachings included everything from salvation to daily conduct to the coming glory of Jesus Christ. Paul wanted the Thessalonians to learn from him by any way possible. Paul also knew that there were other false teachers distorting the truth and wanted the Thessalonians to not stray from the gospel. In verses 16 and 17, Paul offered a quick, simple prayer on behalf of the Thessalonians. He called upon the name of Jesus Christ to intercede for them. That same call on the name of Jesus Christ will set us free today. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Believers, as we go about our daily activities today, let us stay in the Word of God. Read it daily and meditate on it. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. The Comforter is always ready to help us, but we must first be willing to let the Holy Spirit come into our heart. The fellowship of the brethren, brethren of the church is also important in our walk with the Lord. I know that COVID-19 makes it extremely difficult for us to fellowship as a body of believers, but we can reach out to each other through social media text, WhatsApp, or a quick telephone call. Let's pray for one another. These are unprecedented times we are living in. That is why we must remain constant in prayer. When we are all prayed up, there isn't any power on earth that can keep us down. Paul wanted to make sure that the believers in Thessalonica were being led and taught in the teaching of the gospel. Paul also wanted to assure the believer that if Jesus returns tomorrow, all believers will share in the joy of being with him in person. On the other hand, they know that if God takes his time, believers have all the more time to work on bringing others to him. While we are alive and here on earth, we do the work and the will of God. But if he, can, if he comes today or this evening, we will glory with him in person, but in the meantime, we must do all that we can to stand firm and hold on to the gospel and proclaim it until he comes. Have a great day, everyone. Then join us again tomorrow for another Daily Word.